a very good afternoon to all of you um, this is a video lecture on mobile adapt network presented by dr s vimala assistant professor belonging to ec department working for erode singundar engineering college it's located at erode intelligent very good afternoon to all of you this is my outline of my lecture video and uh, outline of uh, mobile adapt network is first of all introduction to mobile adapt network and second one mac con mac layer medium access control and third one what are the routing protocols available in a mobile adapt network and this plans for into three different type of routing protocol first one is reactive protocols and second one is proactive protocols and third one hybrid protocols and the uh, last one transport is used in a mobile adapt network this is the outline of my lecture video before entering into the topic we should know about some basics of network wireless network what is meant by wireless network what is the need of wireless network it is access computing and communication services on the movement of the nodes that is the wireless network it is just infrastructure based networks traditional cellular system is a examples of wireless networks next of all wireless local area networks the wireless local area network it has a infrared or radio links and it is very flexible within a reception area and ad hoc networks are possible and low bandwidth compared to the wire network to compare then the wire network the wireless network which has a uh, low bandwidth it li it's like a 1 to 10 mbps per second the next of all ad hoc network it is a useful when infrastructure not available uh, it is a classification of one of the classification of wireless network the ad hoc network is a infrastructure less network uh, the nodes are autonomously or randomly moving in a network that is impractical or expensive so it is used in the military applications and the rescue application and home network that is the applications of ad hoc network coming to the cellular wireless network uh, the cellular wireless network is having a single hub wireless connectivity to the wired world it has space divided into cells the space divided into number of cells and the base station is responsible to communicate with the host in its cell the mobile host can change cells while they're communicating coming the uh, next important is hand off the hand off will occurs when a mobile host starts communicating via the new base station while travel uh, will send the information from one base station base station to another base station the user can access the new base station the hand off uh, process will occurs next multi hub wireless networks it may need to traverse uh, multiple links to reach the destination it mobility causes the route this is the multi hub wireless network uh, structure it's having a collection of nodes the source node and destination node it's having some multiple path it's a multiple links between the nodes that is the multi hub wireless network next what is in by mobile ad hoc network the mobile ad hoc network is a infrastructure less network to compare than the wireless network so the host movement frequently and the topology change also frequently there is no cellular infrastructure and it having a multi hub wireless links and the data must be routed via the intermediate nodes why we need the ad hoc networks what is the usage of ad hoc network it is a setting up of fixed access points and backbone infrastructure is not always viable the infrastructure may not be present in a disaster area or war zone the infrastructure may not be practical for the short range radios and the bluetooth range will up to the accessible range up to 10 meter uh, to compare the infrared the bluetooth is the advancement of the wireless technology and the infrared is uh, accessible range up to 1 meter only the 1 to 10 meter the bluetooth is also accessible range the advancement of bluetooth is a zigbee 
the accessible range is up to 30 meter and the advancement of uh, zigbee is uh, is a wi-fi up to 100 meter we can access the wireless uh, information so uh, next ad hoc networks do not need backbone infrastructure support are easy to deploy the networks are easy to deploy the topology can be easily accessible so they useful when the infrastructure is off and and destroyed or impractical that is the uh, advan advancement of ad hoc network compare than the wireless network first of all coming to the applications of ad hoc network uh, ad hoc network is used in many applications uh, like uh, personal example of personal area networks the cell phone laptop earphone uh, like a uh, wristwatch and it is used in a military environment uh, which is uh, used for uh, soldiers communication and tank next uh, it is used in a civilian environment uh, it is used in a civilian environment like a taxi cab network and meeting rooms and sport stadiums and boats and small aircraft that are all the applications of ad hoc network which is used in a civilian environment next uh, the mobile ad hoc network which is used in emergency operations uh, like uh, search and rescue applications and policing and firefighting applications that are used in a mobile ad hoc network used uh, in emergency operations next of all we will see about what are the challenges present in a mobile environment first of all what are the limitations of the wireless network uh, limitations of the wireless network is, is followed by the packet loss due to the transmission error due to the transmission errors the packet loss will be occurred that is the one of the limitations of wireless network next uh, variable capacity links the capacity links will be varied in a uh, mobile ad hoc network that is the one of the limitations of wireless network and next uh, limitation is frequently disconnection and part, uh, partitions and next one limited communication bandwidth the communication bandwidth is limited in a wireless network so that is the one of the limitation and the next limitation is broadcast nature of the communication the nature of the communication will be broadcast so it consumes more bandwidth uh, so that is the limitation uh, communication bandwidth uh, prayerly i will uh, note i have noted that is the one of these are all the limitations of wireless network next limitations of imposed by mobility uh, the mobility is the one of the important factor we are using in a mobile ad hoc network why because the movement of nodes uh, it can be change the scalability and reduce this uh, robustness so that is the this requirement we are used in the wireless ad hoc network uh, dynamically changing the topology routes and uh, uh, create the mobility problems so lack of mobility awareness by the system applications we need so that is the limitation mobile computer what are the limitation of mobile computers are the short battery lifetime and limited capacity these are all the limitations of mobile environment these are all the important challenges we have to keep in our mind Uh, while designing a mobile ad hoc network next what are the effects of the protocol stack uh, this is the osa model layer uh, uh, application layer transport layer network layer and data link layer and tcp layer uh, these layers uh, uh, we are using in the entire application in a mobile ad hoc network the application layer the new application and adaptation purpose we are using and the transport uh, congestion and flow control process will occurs and the network layer addressing and routing process we are using the network layer and the data link layer uh, media for the media access purpose and the hand of uh, purpose we are using the data link layer and the physical layer the transmission error and interference we, ha we have to create the connection connection basic layer the transmission errors and interference uh, will overcome by this uh, physical layer this is the effect of mobility on the protocol stack next we will see the medium access control in a mobile ad hoc network that is a mac layer what is the purpose of mac layer in a mobile ad hoc network the mac layer uh, which is classified into two different type uh, one is a contention based mac layer and another one is a schedule based mac layer 
PAMA is the best example for contention based routing protocol which is used in the MAC protocol that are used in a mobile attack network and another one uh, leech protocol is the one of the best example for scheduled routing protocol which is used in a mac layer in a mobile attack network what is the motivation of mobile attack network we can apply the media access method from the fixed network the example carrier sense multiple access and collision division so collision detection it, uh, we can send the data as well as the medium is free listen into the medium if a collision occurs the original method is IEEE 802.3 standard which has followed for the CSMA collision direction method next what is the medium access problem in a wireless network what are the medium access problems occur in a mobile network network the signal strength decreases proportional to the square of the distance and sender would apply the uh, carrier sense and uh, collision detection but the collision happen at the receiver the sender may not hear the collision and the collision detection does not work and the collision sense the carrier sense might not work for the example if a terminal is hidden the terminal uh, hidden means uh, it will create the carrier sense and the collision detection problem in the attack network Means, uh, this is a very very important what is the hidden and exposed terminal problems the hidden terminal problem this is the uh, structure of a hidden terminal problem and the exposed terminal problem uh, we have uh, three uh, nodes a node b node and c node uh, the node a can send the information to the b the c cannot receive a a's information the c wants to send to b the c senses a free medium the carrier sense uh, if the carrier sense is fails the collision at b a cannot receive it. if collision occur in a node b the node a cannot receive the collisions so if the collision detection is a uh, fails the node a is a uh, hidden for c so this is a hidden terminal problem will occur in a wireless network what is an exposed terminal problem for example the node b can send the information to the A node. The C wants to send to another terminal, not A or B. So C can sense the carrier uh, signal, uh, find the medium in use, and it has to wait. So the node A is outside the radio range of the uh, node C. Therefore, waiting is not necessary in the entire network. So the node C is exposed to B. This is the export terminal problem. These are the two important problems will occur in a wireless networks. Next of all, we should know about multiple access with collision avoidance. That is the MAC A or MACA. The MACA uses a signaling packet for the collision avoidance. Uh, it consists of a request to send and clear to send. These are the two important process for avoiding this exposed and hidden terminal problem. So, uh, coming to the request to send, the sender we have, we have to request the right to send from a receiver with a short request to send packet before it send a data packet. So next uh, player to send the receives the receiver grants the right to send as soon as it's ready to receive. So uh, according to this request to send and clear to send, we can uh, rectify the hidden and exposed terminal problem in a adapt network. So coming to the signaling packets contained, it consists of sender address and receiver address and packet size. The variants of this method are used in IEEE 802.11 standards. These variants we are using in the IEEE 802.11 standards. What is the solution for MAC? Uh, by, uh, sorry, multiple access with a collision avoidance. That is the MACA. What is the solution? The MACA avoids the problem of hidden terminal by using this request to send and clear to send. For example, we already we have noted the node can send the information to B and C can receive the information from B. We can directly uh, receive the information from A. So the B is an intermediate node. 
So the A and C want to send the information to the node B. Yes, A, the node A sends the request to send first and C waits after receiving the clear to send from a B. So it will be uh, overcome the problems of occurring the uh, exposed and the hidden terminal problem in a network. So uh, multiple access collision avoidance avoids the problem of exposed terminal problem. The node B wants to send the data to a A node and C node to another terminal. So now C does not have to wait as it cannot receive the clear to send from a node A. What is the reliability of MAC? The wireless links are prone to errors. The higher packet loss rate is determinal and to transport layer performance. What is the solution? Use of acknowledgement. They have to send the information from source to the destination. We need the acknowledgement for avoiding the collision. So when node B receives a packet from a node A and node B send an acknowledgement and if node A fail to receive an acknowledgement, it will retransmit the packet. If does not receiving the acknowledgement from node B to A means we have to retransmit re the packet from one second to the node B. This approach adopted in a many protocol. So uh, next IEEE 802.11 standard in a wireless MAC it has to be distributed and centralize the MAC components. The distributed coordination function and point coordination function which is used in a distribution under centralized MAC components. And distributed coordination function is suitable for multi-hub ad hoc networking. And uh, sing, uh, point coordination function which is suitable for single hub ad hoc networking. Next coming to the IEEE 802.11 uh, distributed coordination function it uses the request to send and clear to send exchange to avoid the hidden terminal problem and any node overhearing a clear to send cannot transmit for the duration of the transfer and it uses the acknowledgement to receive a reliability uh, we can't send the acknowledgement to the receiver or transmitter we can't achieve the reliability in a network so any node receiving the request to send cannot transmit for the duration of the transfer to prevent this collision with acknowledgement when it arrives the sender when b is sending a data to c node a will keep quiet then only have to avoid the collision next coming to the mac a mac a is nothing but um, medium access and collision avoidance uh, with half duplex radios and collision detection is not, not possible and the collision avoidance, once the channel becomes ideal, the node wait for a randomly chosen the duration before the attempting to transmit the data. So IEEE 802.11, a distributed coordination function, which has a transmitting a packet, choose a pack back off interval in the range 0, 0, contention window. The CW is nothing but contention window. The countdown the back of interval when medium is ideal. The countdown is suspended if the medium becomes busy. When the back of interval reaches zero, can be transmit uh, request to send. So time spent counting the time, counting down, back of intervals is a part of MAC overhead. And large contention window leads to larger back of interval and small contention window leads a larger number of collisions. This is the purpose of larger condensation window and the small condensation window which is used in the IEEE standard 802.11 distributed coordination function standard. And next coming to the medium access congestion control. And medium access congestion control followed in a uh, IEEE 802.11 distributed coordination function which has a congestion control achieved by dynamically choosing the contention window. So the binary exponential back off in a distributed coordination function when a node fails to receive the clear to send in response to its request to send, it increases the contention window. The contention window is doubled up to an upper bound. When a node successfully completes a data transfer, it restores the contention window to contention window minimum. Next, 
coming to the energy conservation. What is the energy conversation we are using a Mac layer? The proposal typically suggests uh, turning the radio off when not needed. Uh, when we are use, when we didn't use a radio, we have to uh, turn off the radio. So the power saving mode in a IEEE 802.11, the infrastructure mode and access point periodically transmit a beacon indicating which nodes have packets waiting for them. And each power saving node waits periodically to receive the beacon. If your node has a packet waiting, then it sends a power saving pool after waiting for a backup interval in a zero comma contention window minimum. So access point sends the data in a response to packet save, sorry, power saving pool. Uh, we are using SMAC under medium uh, mediation MAC protocol. Uh, for uh, providing a low duty cycle and wake up period can be produced by the SMAC protocol. And coming to the summary of MAC protocol, the wireless medium is prone to hidden and export terminal problem. And protocols are typically based on the carriers and multiplexes and collision avoidance. And we have used a request to send and clear to send based on the signaling for avoiding the collision. And we are using a Acknowledgement for the reliability in a network and contention window is used for the congestion control and IEEE 802.11 wireless LAN standard which is used for providing this congestion control as well as the condition avoidance in a MAC layer and the fairness issue are still unclear. Is coming to the classification of routing protocol. The protocol is nothing but a uh, set of rules that are governed by the network what are the protocols which is used for a uh, mobile attack network uh, routing protocols which is classified into three different type uh, first one is uh, proactive routing protocol reactive routing protocol and a hybrid routing protocol before entering into the topic what is mean by you should know about what is in by routing and what is in by mobility what is by routing finding a path from a source to a destination. That is the basic motto of routing. And what are the issues in a routing and mobility? It frequently route changes. The amount of data transferred between the route changes may be much smaller than the traditional network. The route changes may be related to the cost movement and the low bandwidth links can be done in a um, routing protocol that can be avoided by using the mini routing protocol. The goals of routing protocol, what are the goals of routing protocols? To decrease routing related overhead and to find a short routes and to find stable routes despite mobility. This is a mobile IP structure. Uh, yes, the source is the router one and mobile host will act as a home agent for the router two and uh, can send the information from the router 1 and router 2 the router 3. So the source is the router 1 and the mobile host can be moved to the router 2 from the router sorry uh, to the router 3 from the router 2 that is act as a foreign agent. The foreign agent is act as a router 3 and home agent is act as a router and the router 1 is the source node. The packets are tunneled using the IP in a internet protocol. What is in a, what is meant by routing in a mobile attack network? The unicast routing protocol. In many protocols have been proposed in a unicast routing protocol. Some specifically invented for MANET. Others adapted from a protocols for wired network. No single protocol works well in all environment. The some attempts made to develop adaptive hybrid routing protocol. What are the standardization effort in a IETF? Uh, the mobile attack network, mobile IP working groups is added in a IETF standard. The routing protocols available in a mobile attack network already I have explained. What are the classification of routing protocol? First one, proactive protocols, and second one, reactive protocols, and third one, hybrid routing protocols. Coming to the proactive protocol, it is a traditional distributed shortest path protocols to maintain the routes between the every host pair at all times. And based on the periodic updates, the high routing overhead will be occurred. 
what are the example of uh, proactive routing protocol the destination sequence distance vector is the best suitable example for proactive routing protocol coming to the reactive protocol to determine the route if and when needed whenever we need the uh, route information we can use the route reactive protocol the reactive protocol is otherwise called as interzonal network protocol but the proactive routing protocol is a intrazonal routing protocol and source can be initiate route discovery and the example of reactive protocol is the dynamic source routing and ad hoc on demand routing protocol the proactive routing protocol is the table driven uh, approach protocol and the reactive protocol is the on demand based routing protocol and the hybrid protocol is the combination of proactive and reactive it can be adaptive combination of proactive and reactive the example is zone routing protocol is the best example for hybrid routing protocol coming to the protocol traits of what is the traits of a protocol uh, the proactive protocol it always maintain the routes and little or no delay for route determination and consume bandwidth to keep route up to date and to maintain routes which may never be used these are all the traits of the, of the proactive protocol coming to the traits of of reactive protocol it has a lower overhead since routes are determined on demand and significant delay in a route determination and employ the flooding and control traffic may be bursty these are all the traits of of reactive protocol which approach achieves a better trade off depends on the traffic and mobility patterns coming to the reactive protocol Uh, dynamic source routing protocol is the reactive routing protocol when node s wants to send a packet to node d but does not know a route to d the node s initiate a route discovery the route discovery is the important factor we are using in a dynamic source routing the source node s floods the route request route request we have to send and route reply from the destination node the each node appends own identifier when forwarding the route request for example we can send the packet from source node to destination node we should know and appends own identifier having a own identifier when forwarding the route request we have to send the route request to the destination node but this is the example of uh, route discovery in a uh, dynamic source routing the s node is the source node and we have to send the information to the d node and we have to find the shortest path by using the routing protocol uh, the the this blue color is indicating the represent uh, a node that has received a route request for d from a s this is a broadcast transmission route discovery in a dynamic source routing protocol the s node is the source node it can uh, the dotted line represent the transmission of route request the x comma y represent the appended to route request and the next part the node h receives a packet uh, route request from a two neighbor node the two neighbor nodes are c node and b node that uh, dotted line is indicating the uh, s comma c and the s comma b that is these two are the neighbor nodes of h the h receives a packet route records for from two neighbor node it is the potential for the collision next the node c receives a route request from g and h node but does not forward it again because the node c has already forwarded the route request once once the route request sent from the one node we can't able to forward again the node j and k both broadcast route request to node d since node j and k are hidden and forward to other their transmission may collide the node d does not forward route request because the node d is the intended the destination d on receiving the first route request sends a route reply the d have to send the uh, acknowledgement to the source node that is the route reply 
the root reply is sent on a route obtained by reversing the route appended to the received route request the route reply includes a route from s node to d node on which the route request was received by a node d so next you have to send the route reply from the d node to j node and j node to f node and f node to e node and e node to the final destination s of course node the s yes. the route reply of s comma e comma f comma j comma d that is the shortest path of the entire network the node s on receiving route reply catches the route included in a route reply when the node s sends a data packet to the d node the entire route is included in the packet header and the name is source routing this is the name of source routing the intermediate nodes use the source route included in a packet to determine to whom a packet should be forwarded data delivery in a dynamic flow routing the data can be delivered from the s node to destination node after uh, getting the route request and route reply we can send the data directly for the shortest path s comma e comma f comma j comma d is the shortest path of the routing network what is the optimization of uh, dynamic flow routing the route catching each node catches a new route which learns by an any means when the node s yes, find the route uh, s yes, comma e comma f comma j comma d to node d the node s yes, also learns route s yes, comma e comma f to node f when the node k receives route request from a s yes, comma e comma g the destined for node node k learns route k comma g comma c comma s yes, to node d when the node f forwards the route reply for the s comma e comma f comma j comma d from the node b sir node f learns route f comma j comma d to node d when the node e forwards the data s comma e comma f comma j comma d it learns route e f j d to node d a node may also learn a route when it overhears the data the problem is stand catches may increase the overhead of the network so the dynamic source routing has advantages of routes maintained only between the nodes who need to communicate and reduce the overhead of route maintenance and the route catching can further reduce the route discovery overhead a single route discovery may yield many routes to the destination due to the intermediate nodes replying up from local catches these are the advantages of dynamic source routing what are the disadvantages of dynamic source routing is the first disadvantage is packet header size grows with route length due to the source routing and the spread of route request may potentially reach all the nodes in the network the potential collision between the route request propagated by the neighboring nodes what is the insertion of random delays before forwarding the route request the next drawback is increased contention if too many route replies come back due to the nodes replying using the local catchy the route replies on the problem the stale catchy having a so many problem the next class uh, we will see the ad hoc on demand distance routing protocol that is the proactive routing protocol example next uh, next video we will continue the proactive routing protocol and the hybrid routing protocol and also transport issues in a wireless attack network okay students i hope you all are understanding about what is the basic of mobile ad hoc network and what is the basic of wireless network and wireless net network is the infrastructure network it is the classification of wireless network is one of the uh, ad hoc network and uh, wireless infra networks are the classification of wireless networks the ad hoc network which is used to specific applications like uh, 
uh, environmental application and rescue application and emergency application and military applications and uh, building environment and uh, personal area communication we are using an ad hoc network uh, what are the routing protocols behind the ad hoc network what is the uh, challenges and the characteristics requirement and required mechanism what are the enabling technologies of ad hoc network uh, we have seen and the next class we will see the proactive routing protocol and a hybrid routing protocol what are the transport uh, layer issues in a ad hoc network thank you thank you for